Hey, hello there, Daniel Kilburn here. So today I'm asking you to take a little trip with me and let's unlock some family safety secrets. That's right, family safety secrets. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, we do that by empowering our children through disaster planning. Now, if you're wondering why this is important for me, I'm, I'm going to say it again. You know, I believe we need to protect our children. We protect our children by having them prepared for the emergencies and disasters that may come into their life. I mean, they might not, but let's have them prepared for them if they do. And one of the most important things and reasons I'm actually here right now is because so many people I've talked to, parents refused to talk to their children. They refuse to actually build an emergency plan because they're afraid of upsetting their child and causing them anxiety. Well, I got news for you, mom and dad. If you live in an area that might have a hurricane, might have a tornado, a wildfire, or an earthquake, or an active shooter, if you're not talking to them about it, your child is talking to someone about it. Your children aren't stupid, so don't act like they are and stop treating them like they are. Your children are very bright, they're intelligent people, and they want to know what's going on. And if you're not helping them find that information, somebody else is. And you, mom and dad, have no idea who that person is and what that information is that they're getting. So let's get past this whole thing about protecting our children by keeping them bubble wrapped, because that's a failure right there. And let's look at some understanding of what happens when we educate our child how to protect themselves and how to handle the emergencies and disasters that are going to come in their life. They are. We, we, we can't get around that. One thing, it helps build their resilience. It helps them learn how to bounce back because it gives them tools to work with. So that way they'll see what's coming. They'll know what's happening. They'll have a tool. They're not going to be anxious. They're not going to be upset because they know what they're doing. That's right. It's called education. Know what you're doing. Another thing, it instills confidence in your child. It gives them the confidence to act on their own, which is crucial. Mom, dad, if there's a house fire and you're not home and your child is, do they know what to do about it? Are they going to be able to act on their own and get out of the house? Well, not if you haven't planned for it. No, they're not. What else does it do? Well, by knowing what to do, you reduce your anxiety. So that excuse, mom and dad, of well, I'm making my child anxious. I'm giving them anxiety by talking to them about this. It's a lie that you're telling yourself. So stop lying to yourself because by giving your child the information that they need to use to protect themselves, you are removing the anxiety. So what are the, some of the things that happen when you engage in bubble wrapping them for life? Well, you, you isolate your child emotionally in a lot of different ways. One is, mom, dad, you might be upset about this. You might totally understand deep down in that reptile brain of yours that something might happen and you're doing nothing about it. So therefore, you're not being true and honest to your kids. So you're isolating your child. You're isolating your child when the conversation with other people around the family because, oh my, shh, don't talk about that. That's not a good thing to say. And you're also increasing your child's vulnerability because you have not taught your child how to respond to the event, whatever it might be. And you're making it a poor under understanding or expectation of reality. By failing to talk about the possibility that something might happen, then obviously you might think, well, it can't be that bad. I mean, if we're not going to discuss it, it's not going to be that bad. And I do know that for a lot of parents, that is their excuse for doing nothing. Because they figure, well, it's not going to be that bad. Well, I hope it isn't. I really hope it never even happens. But what if it does? Okay, so let's get an understanding of how to handle these things. So that way, no matter how bad it is, we're not vulnerable and we're not isolated. So what's the ways to get started with our child? There's a couple of ways to do it. First of all, we have to open that mouth, right? <laughs> Tell your child you love it. Hey, sweetheart, I love you. This is why I want to have this conversation with you. Let's sit down here and talk about a house fire, an earthquake, a hurricane, whatever. House fire is the best place to start, though, because that is the number one thing that kills people in this country over all natural disasters, house fires. So that's actually the best place to start. And I'll leave it at that right now. One thing to keep in mind is age-appropriate communications. Obviously, you don't want to be talking too high or too far or above. You don't want to be scaring your child by talking all doom and gloom. 
we want to establish a safe environment, a safe space to have this conversation. And one of the best ways to do it is through role playing and storytelling. What if? Now, I know you've probably read stories to your children, you know, when they're going to bed. And if you look at those stories, there's a lot of what ifs going on there and how they handle things and move through life so they can get better. Well, this is one of those stories, okay? You can also do role play. Well, if mommy and daddy weren't here, what would you do? Well, let's say mommy fell down and hurt herself. What would you do? Would you teach your kid to call 911? Hmm, let's find out about that. So when you're putting your plan together, you have to involve everybody in the plan. Whoever it is that is going to be involved in the plan has to be involved in building the plan. That's right. They need to have their fingerprints on that plan somehow. Now, it's very important to encourage your child to feed you input, to give you input on the plan. You might find something about your child that you didn't know. Um, and I'll use the house fire analogy here. If you have to get out of the house at least two ways out of every room, your child might know ways that you don't know to get out of the house. I mean, you know, kids are little and we're nosy. I know. I remember I was a nosy little turd when I was a kid. I discovered all sorts of stuff about our house that my mom and my dad didn't know about. But you never know where it's going to go unless you have that conversation. So encourage the input of your child, no matter how old they are. It does a couple things. It gives them the opportunity to be heard, to talk. And it gives them the opportunity to tell you what's going on in their mind. And you might learn something from them. Now, another thing to do is to practice. That's right, play. That's the three Ps to stay, uh, disaster planning. Have a plan, be playful and persevere. Well, we're looking at practice. Number P number two, play. Practice your drills together. Only by practicing them will you and your family know actually how to do them. We can talk about them all day long. We can look at videos. We can read books. But unless we actually do them, we will not understand what needs to be done. It's called the muscle memory, okay? So we have to, we have to practice those things. Then another thing that happens is we empower our child through the learning process. But not only are we empowering them, we're empowering ourselves through the learning process, right? We're learning more about our family, our loved ones. We're learning what ticks, what works, what doesn't work, what scares us, what doesn't scare us, as opposed to implying that we think we know what's going on by not doing anything. So educate your child about the essential skills like first aid, fire extinguishers, calling 911, even how to turn off the utilities. You never know where and how this might come important to their life. Now, obviously, if it's a baby still in diapers, is not walking or crawling yet. No, you're not going to try to teach the baby how to use a fire extinguisher. I get it. Okay. But let's do some common sense here. These things might happen when you're not home, mom and dad. Okay. Something might happen when you're not home. So that's why you have to educate your child. So I talked earlier about um, stories and role play. Very fun. Okay. Kids like to play. Come on. They go outside and play all the time. Well, they should be. Uh, do they uh, have imaginary friends? Do they have mythical characters that play? That's the role playing. So let's, let's play the role play. Let's, let's dive right into it. Have fun with it. It does many things. It gives you an emotional connection with your child. You learn through empathizing with your child what's going on. Through the role play, you may find out things you never knew. Not only about your child, but also about yourself. And this is interactive learning by role playing, by talking it out, by mapping it out, by uh, table topping it, or actually physically do it. This is an interactive learning experience. We're getting to do something with no danger around us. It's all safe, but we're going to do something. And what if it isn't safe and what isn't dangerous? Or if it's dangerous, well, we already know what to do. So we get to move forward with that. So make sure that you practice these together. Practice these drills together. Don't tell your child, okay, I want you to go practice house fire evacuation. I'm going to be down at the spa getting my nails done. Call me when you're done. No, don't do that. So uh, we discussed a couple of things that are benefits about practicing together. And again, they build confidence, right? Two, it builds the team. Family, you're a team, aren't you? That's right, you should be. And it familiarizes you and your loved ones with the procedures of what you're going to do. Now, here's an interesting thing. We all know what these are. We all got one. And there's an app on them for everything. And there's even an app for a family emergency disaster plan out there somewhere. I know there is. If it's not out there yet, I'm building it. It'll be out there soon enough. But the thing is, 
it's not in your best interest to try to find that app and get it up and running when it's time to evacuate the house because of a fire because you haven't planned for it and you need to be taught. So no, don't rely on someone else to tell you what to do when you're supposed to be doing it. You need to be familiar with whatever the practice or procedure is. So there's a couple of positive things here. It's called a positive educational outcome. That's right, these are positive. This get the kid engaged and interested by having the role playing and the storytelling. You get to banter back and forth, play different characters. You get to understand through the experience of actually doing things. You get to find out what works. You get to find out what does not work. And if it's not going to work, great, let's fix it so it does work. It's best to find out when you don't need it that it's broken <laughs> than to find out it's broken when you need it. Okay, so let's, let's use that to your advantage there. It empowers your children. It prepares your children. And it gives the family a whole unit of confidence and unifies the family. I'm sure you know somewhere that we come together if we have a common enemy. Well, if we're a family and we're coming together because we want to protect ourselves from the earthquake, the hurricane, the fire, or the wildfire, or the whatever might be happening. So, so it's a very good way to bring the family together, to build confidence as a family, and to understand that we've got each other's back. So there's a, a few things you can ask, you know, and I've already covered them about the benefits of role playing and disaster drills is practice. Practice makes permanent, not perfect. There's nothing perfect, okay? But practice, the way you practice things is how you're going to do them. So we'll just stick with that there. So in conclusion here, let's keep this in mind here. By not involving your children in an emergency or disaster plan that you know you need to have, you're setting your child up to fail. By not having that conversation with them, they are already having that conversation with someone else. You know they are, whether you want to admit it or not. If there's a small earthquake that happened and everyone felt it, they're talking about it. If there was a house fire down the street, your kids are talking about it. If there was a flood somewhere in the community or they saw it on the news, your kids are talking about it. So have them have that conversation with you, mom and dad. So that way they get the answers and the questions the question is answered that you want them to have answered because you're doing what you can to find information that will help provide a process of making this happen. So this is a Facebook Live. There's going to be a link down here somewhere to go to the blog post. There's a lot more in the blog post. There's some links in the blog post, which will point you in the right direction to have additional information, not just from me, but from other agencies who have very good information. And I'm all about giving that information out to people. If you don't know where to find it, ask me. I'll help you find it, okay? Um, also, if you need a place to get started, I got this wonderful book right here, Family Urban Disaster Planning. That's what I wrote it for. It covers the four basics, food, water, shelter, and sanitation. That's right. I'm not talking about washing your hands. I'm talking about you got to go poo and pee sometimes. That's right, you do. All right, so until next time. Love your children, embrace your children, discuss these things with them and grow as a family unit. Leave your children with these tools so they can be more confident and comfortable in the world that they are taking over someday. They're not gonna be the little kids forever. One of these days, your daughter and your son is gonna be a parent. One of them is gonna be a fireman, a cop. One of them is gonna be a business executive. One of them is going to be a tech guru. Who knows? I have no idea, but they're growing up. Okay. So let's give them the tools, the best tools we can to make them the best people they're going to be to take over this world that we're handing to them. So Daniel, until next time, I want you all to stay informed and stay safe. I'm out of here.